Hi, I just wanted to go through a quick um, tutorial on using PDF Stitcher and then importing a file into Inkscape to uh, say optimize your, uh, your layout um, to maximize your fabric usage or you know even just to make sure that you have enough fabric for a pattern because um, I've definitely done that you know with scrap pieces of fabric um, so I'm just gonna go through that quickly here so first of all I've got PDF stitcher open I'm going to find my input PDF which is here um, luckily, this pattern has a projector file already, so I'm not going to have to tile it, but if you are working with an A, uh, A4 or letter file, you're going to have to tile it first, which is uh, has the capability in here. And there's a few other YouTube videos that you can follow for that. Um, I'm going to save it as green tea and the size that I'm doing, which is F. Save. Okay. If you just wanted to isolate the layer and add a margin, which I do do quite a bit, um, I don't have a need to open it in Inkscape, you can add a margin to the uh, final output so that you don't have any issues with it um, coming off of your cutting mat. I'm going to leave it as is because I know I'm going to open it in Inkscape. Okay, and then I'm telling it what, um, what layers I want. So I do want the common layer. And I do want F. And I'm going to select F and tell it to make it four point. Now you can thicken the lines in Inkscape, and this is uh, what I would be doing if I wasn't able to use PDF Stitcher. So say if I was working with a non-layered file. Um, but since this is layered, I'm going to apply the line thickness here. And the benefit of doing it in PDF Stitcher versus Inkscape, I find, is that it doesn't make the text go all wonky, because um, I'm selecting everything in Inkscape, and it, it does have an effect on the on the text. Uh, I'm going to apply that here. I'm going to generate the PDF. You see it appear in my file. So I've got Inkscape open, and I'm actually going to. drag it in. You can see the text is appearing here and just the one size, which is what I want. Okay. Okay, so it is in here. I'm going to go into the document settings because I prefer to work in inches. And I'm going to wait until later to resize. Okay. So first of all, this is all grouped together right now, and we're going to need to ungroup it in order to manipulate the pattern pieces. So you can either go Object, Ungroup, and as you continue working in here, you're going to get used to going Control-Shift-G to ungroup because you often have multiple, um, multiple layers to ungroup. My Inkscape chose to froze on, freeze on me, so give me a moment here. Okay, there we go. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take this cat little calibration grid and move it onto the bodice here. Um, first, I'm going to control G to uh, group the text with the box, and I'll bring it in here can remove some of this extra text because it's just in my way and I'm just dragging the mouse and selecting it and deleting it. Okay, so that looks like it's uh, added everything. So I'm going to control G for object group it. At this point, I'm going to start unfolding some of the pieces. Uh, I prefer to cut off of the fold with my ultra short throw. Um, every little bit of thickness matters um, so I really don't like to cut on the fold if I can at all avoid it and it also makes it easier for us uh, to gauge uh, fabric efficiency or do what I call pattern Tetris. So I'm going to take this I am going to go I always forget where this is Why can I never remember where it is? Edit. Duplicate. 
And as I said, as you get more and more used to using Inkscape, uh, Control D is the shortcut. So that's what I'm used to doing. I'm not used to finding it in the menu, but I'm doing it here for you. Okay, duplicate. And then I'm going to select this arrow key that says flip selected objects horizontally. Okay, so you see we've got the two pieces here. And it defaults to the um, node uh, snapping being on. And I most times prefer to keep it on. It helps you match up the pieces. So once you've got them mirrored and lined up pretty nicely, I'm going to uh, select them and control G to group them all together. And that way, when you're moving them around, they're going to move around together. Okay. I'm going to group this together. This is the V neck. I'm going to duplicate it, mirror it, and then bring it together. And is that pretty close? Yeah. And then I'm going to group this together so that we can move it together. I'm going to group the other neckline. And it looks like there's a little calibration square that I missed. So I'm going to ungroup for a moment. I don't need that in there. And then I'm going to regroup this together. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for this bodice. I'm going to group it, duplicate it, mirror it. Oops. And then move one side so that they're matching. And I think we're good there. Occasionally, the nodes have trouble snapping. And you may have to turn off that setting. Um, especially if you're rotating a piece, um, if any of your pattern pieces uh, were, say, like in a diagonal to fit it on an AO properly, um, you'll, you're going to need to, you know, rotate and so you may have to remove the snapping. Oops. And I just have to group together the sleeve piece and duplicate it because we would normally cut it uh, mirrored. So you would normally cut two of them. I really prefer to keep my fabric facing up uh, just to make sure that I'm cutting on the grain. Not that it matters as much with knit fabric, but still a good habit to be in, especially if it's patterned. Okay, so you can change your document size to match your fabric and then add a margin. What my preference is now to do is add a rectangle doesn't matter what size you make it originally, because then we're going to uh, go to the select and transform uh, objects here. And I'm going to adjust the width and height to match my fabric. Uh, so we're usually dealing with knit fabric for this pattern. So um, 58 inches is a pretty good amount to do it. Normally, it's like 58 to 60 inches, although the fabric I was working with uh, when I was using this pattern the other day was a little bit wider. So um, you may even choose to have different layouts if you really want to optimize your fabric so that if you're cutting with a 44 inch uh, wide fabric versus a 60 inch fabric you're going to use that fabric most efficiently okay and then the height i'm going to change to um let's change it to 60 inches which is like a meter and a half ish I know it's not going to take that much, so I think we've got extra. Okay, while I have this selected now, I'm actually going to go into Document Properties. And since I've got the rectangle selected, I'm just going to tell it that I want a margin around it. 20 inches is a very generous margin. And then I'm going to resize page to drawing or selection. If you've got nothing selected, it will make sure that the margin is around all of the pieces. Um, but since we really only need it to be uh, the size of the fabric plus an, a margin, I think we're good here. Uh, so then it's just a matter of playing with the pattern pieces. Uh, so when you're looking at it this small, you're going to th see like it's going to look like these are pretty close together. Uh, and in actuality, when you zoom in full size, you're going to realize, oh, I have like an inch or two between these. Um, so you're probably you're probably good to put them even closer. You can zoom in a little bit. Um, there's been some times where I've been really tight and um, it's always a good idea to measure your fabric after you wash it to account 
for any shrinkage that may have happened because um, I definitely did not do that with some jeans earlier and I I mean luckily I had extra fabric but um, if I didn't I would have been buying more so yeah it's just a matter of laying it out and if we're dealing with um, maybe I'll show you this if you're dealing with uh, non-directional fabric you can see sorry if you're dealing with directional fabric you're gonna have to lay out all your pattern pieces like this right like how you would uh, be sewing them up and you can see that the closest these two bodice pieces can get um, is here but if you were to rotate one of the pieces around which you could do if um, if the pattern if, if the fabric was non-directional and look how much tighter you can get in so um, having non-directional fabric will be more fabric efficient right so along with different widths of fabric that you might be using for a tried and true fabric uh, or pattern that you're going to be using again and again um, maybe you want to have uh, one that is most efficient for directional fabric and one that's most efficient for non-directional fabric so with the full length sleeve, you do need a little bit of extra yardage um, or meterage. If I were cutting this out, I don't really want to bother with uh, going into Inkscape and editing out the long sleeve. I, I might just leave it in there. But what I might do is I might, uh, might drag this down. And since this is presumably with non-directional fabric, because one of my bodice pieces is upside down, move one of the sleeves upside down. So you can definitely fit this on a smaller piece of fabric if you were doing the short sleeve. Oh, and make sure to bring the, uh, the band. And obviously you're only going to need one band, um, but I just kind of keep everything in here in case I change my mind. Something like this where you're only going to be using like a, a meter-ish of fabric, um, I'm a little bit more loosey-goosey in terms of how tightly I, I, I put everything in together. Um, but something else where, you know, I've got like three meters and I'm trying to make like three different garments of it. I'm maybe going to be a bit more picky or spend a little bit more time uh, getting things lined up. And it's a good idea to save. And I probably should have saved at this point. I'm going to save it as an SG svg file to begin with as i always do because it does make it easier to go back and edit it after and then i'm going to save it and i might do this one as um like short sleeve one meter and save that as a pdf so then i know okay so that now appears in here short sleeve one meter and i can open it in Adobe uh, and and yeah so I mean that's that was pretty simple obviously it's a lot harder when you have um, larger pattern pieces longer pattern pieces uh, but you do find uh, like a pattern uh, I know that there's a general way I can lay out directional versus non-directional uh, joggers uh, with the legs um, that lets you use fabric more efficiently so you just get used to it and it doesn't take you as long um, as you go as, as you do it more and more. But hopefully that's been helpful for you. If you have any questions, let me know and I can try to answer them. Thanks.